modes of discovery and this is now our part 2 and we will be discussing rule 28. So again, our mnemonic is PIDEA. Don't forget PIDEA. What is letter P? That is the production or inspection of documents or things. Another P is for the physical and mental examination of persons. Your letter D is of course the famous deposition. Deposition before action, pending action, or deposition pending appeal. Your letter I is interrogatories to parties and A is for your admission by adverse party. So we are done with rule 27 that is the production or inspection of documents or things. If you are new to my channel, just go to the playlist NASA modes of discovery. So in this video, what we are going to discuss is rule 28, physical and mental examination of persons. So how can you avail of this mode of discovery and the rule 28? What is the procedure? First is you need to file a motion. And just like your Rule 27, di ba, dun sa production or inspection of documents, ang requirement dun is meron dapat motion. Here in Rule 28, it's the same. There must be a motion filed. And just like in your Rule 27, the motion must show good cause. There must be a good cause. And with notice to the party to be examined, to be physically or mentally examined, and notice to all other parties. What is our basis? That is very clear according to your Section 2 of Rule 28. So if there is a motion filed, what is now the obligation of the court? The court needs to render a ruling. Dapat magkaroon ng ruling. A ruling either granting the motion for physical or mental examination or a ruling denying said motion. But what could be your ground in granting or denying said motion? You read Section 1 of Rule 28. Kasi ang Rule 28 hindi applicable sa lahat ng cases. Rule 28 applies only in cases or action wherein the mental or physical condition of a party is in controversy. Kaya kung ang kaso na final is forcible entry and lawful detainer, pwede ka bang mag-avail ng Rule 28? Definitely, hindi. Unlike, unless makapag-create ka ng connection. But your Rule 28 applies only to cases like, for example, annulment of contract. Kasi sa annulment of contract, if your basis in annulling said contract is because one of the parties in, is insane, then you could avail of this Rule 28. Another example is in guardianship, in your petition for guardianship, wherein you will allege that the person is mentally incapable. So, this is also where Rule 28 comes in. Before we proceed to the next step, remember ha, that it is discretionary on the part of the court to order the person to submit to a physical or mental examination by a physician. Kaya yung Rule 65, mandamus, does not apply here. Kasi nga, discretionary on the part of the judge. Next, speaking of physician, itong physician, Take note that this physician must be a neutral party. Dapat ang kanyang report is fair to everybody at hindi siya nag, uh, nagsaside sa isang party lang. So, yan ang expectation natin sa ating physician. So, what will happen next if the court will grant your motion? The next step is that the court will now issue an order. The court will issue an order wherein it shall specify the time, the place, the manner, the conditions, and scope of the examination, and the person or persons by whom it is to be made. What is our basis? That is Rule 28, Section 2. That is very clear. So, ito yung procedure ha. There must be a motion first filed. Hindi moto propio on the part of the court to have that person mentally examined. Dapat meron munang motion and then the court will now issue an order. And after this, 
the doctor, the physician, is required to make a report of its of or he, of his or her findings. So example lang ha. Let us just say that there is a case filed by this girl against this guy, and what did she do? She filed now a motion for the mental examination of this guy. Masyado na daw babaero. Baka may problema na sa pag-iisip. So, the court granted the motion. This guy was mentally examined. And then, the report of the doctor was already submitted to the court. So, ano ang ating scenario? Itong si guy, gustong makakuha ng copy ng report ng doctor. So, what did he do? He went to a lawyer. Sabi niya, attorney, gusto ko talagang magkaroon ng copy ng uh, report ng doktor. Aba, ura-urada agad si attorney. Sabi ni attorney, pwede naman, pwede, pwede kang makakuha ng copy. Tama ba si attorney? Answer is, tama naman si attorney. Because that is very clear according to section 3 of rule 28. This guy can request from this girl to deliver to him a copy of a detailed written report of the examining physician setting out the findings and conclusions. But in that scenario ha, makikita mo talaga na si attorney hindi nagbasa ng modes of discovery. Hindi alam ang rules ng modes of discovery. So, paano natin nasabi na si attorney ay hindi talaga masyadong kabisado ang rules ng modes of discovery? Because, remember ha, if this guy is going to request for that written report coming from this girl, then this girl now is entitled also to receive from this guy a report a like report of any examination, whether that is in the past or in the future, of the same mental or physical condition. What is our basis? That is very clear according to your Section 3 of Rule 28. The girl is now entitled, the word used ha, is shall be entitled upon request to receive from the party examined a like report of any examination. Kaya kung ikaw yung lawyer, ikaw ang pinuntahan, dapat ang advice mo dyan, teka lang muna, pag-aralan muna natin, meron ka bang mga past medical history na incriminating sa'yo? Meron ka bang mga medical information na hindi pwedeng i-divulge? Kasi once you request this written report, then you will open a Pandora box. Bakit natin nasabi na nag-o-open ng Pandora box? Because you read section 4 of Rule 28. Ano ang sinasabi ng section 4, Rule 28? Because you, Gerald, by requesting and obtaining a report of the examination of the doctor, what is the effect? You waive your privilege. Privileged against what? Privileged against the uh, regarding rather the testimony of every other person who examined you or who will examine you in the future in respect of the same mental or physical examination. Kaya kung yung doktor mo ipapatawag namin, pupunta sa witness stand, ngayon mag-o-object ka because of the privilege communication between a patient and a physician, between a doctor and a patient, then you are no longer allowed to object because you already waived that privilege. Take note ha of section 4. Scenario number 2. What if sabi ni Gerald na attorney, ganito na lang gawin natin. Pag itong si ati girl magre-request sa akin ng aking past medical history or aking mga future medical information, we are just going to refuse. Can Gerald do that? Answer is, you read section 3 of rule 28. Because if he is going to refuse to deliver such report, the court may just require its delivery on such terms as are just. What else? 
if the physician fails or refuses to make also a report, the court will also just exclude his testimony. So take note ha, walang lusot si Gerald. So scenario number three, what if si Mr. Gerard Anderson, he refuses to obey an order requiring him to submit to a mental examination? What, what would be the consequences? The consequences are stated in Section 3 of Rule 29. First consequence is that an order can be made that matters regarding the mental condition of Mr. Gerald Anderson shall be taken to be established. Letter B. An order can be made refusing to allow Mr. Gerald Anderson to support his claim or to oppose the claim of Bea Alonzo. Another uh, consequence is that an order can be made prohibiting Mr. Gerald Anderson from introducing in evidence designated documents or things or items of testimony or an order can be made striking out pleadings or parts thereof staying further the proceedings until Mr. Gerald Anderson will cooperate or will obey or dismissing the action or proceeding or any part thereof or it, there will be a judgment by default against Mr. Gerald Anderson. Take note ha, yung judgment by default, very important yan. How about arrest? Can you arrest Mr. Gerald Anderson? Answer is definitely no, because itong arrest, this is applicable to other modes of discovery, but in a physical or mental examination, arrest is not a consequence. Kaya if you are going to go back to this bar examination, describe briefly at least five modes of discovery. We know already the answer, that's PIDEA. But if you are going to give a brief description, we start with the first letter P, that is the production or inspection of documents or things. And the other P is the physical and mental examination of persons. Parehas lang halos ng sagot. Because both of this mode of discovery requires a motion and there must be also a good cause shown and also you must notify all the parties in that case. At kung may oras pa, para lang madagdagan yung sagot no because that is already correct. That, uh, the, the question only requires a brief description but pag may oras pa at gusto mo pang dagdagan, Take note that in your Rule 27, dapat the documents or things must not be privileged. And in your Rule 28, what is important is that the physical or mental condition of a party is in controversy in that case or in that action.